When we dream about the ideal cafe, most of us are probably picturing stunning, award-winning cafe designs like this, this or this. The problem is most of us aren't working with the perfect Brooklyn style warehouse space or million dollar budget. No, most people are starting with a pretty ordinary space and a modest budget. And the end result is, shall we say, not exactly award winning. So today I'm gonna to take you through six cafe design mistakes that I come across all the time and find out what we can learn from those best cafe designs. You know, we're gonna try and sprinkle a bit of that big money magic on the humble neighborhood cafe. So this is probably a good time to point out that I'm not a designer myself. So these tips are coming from someone who's owned and operated cafes and worked with a stack of coffee businesses over the last 20 years. So I've seen a lot of design mistakes and I've made a few myself. Okay, let's start with a really common one. Now think about that typical small shop on the street. The one with the narrow window front and then a long thin space that stretches away from the street. Now the problem with this type of space is that we have a nice bit at the front with natural light coming in the window and the rest of the shop is a miserable dark cave. So it's tempting to fix this by flooding the space with a few bright ceiling lights, but then it just kind of feels like a hospital. So instead, here's a better approach to lighting. Now first, if you can make it work, then the best option is to start by making the most of natural light, you know, the sun. And this is one reason why corner locations are so popular with chains like Starbucks. They have light coming in from two sides. Now, not everyone can get a corner spot, so some cafes will add extra windows, skylights, or a courtyard to make the most of the sunlight. Of course, that's not always possible. And even if it is, you're still gonna need to add lights. So the trick here is, rather than flooding light everywhere, is to focus lighting on certain spots, like on tables, the counter, and against the walls to highlight design features. Now this tends to work best if you can use lots of smaller focus lights rather than a few high power lights. Now this helps to create a better atmosphere and gives the place a more high-end feel. Now whenever I've been involved in a new cafe build, the place usually looks pretty good on day one. Everything is fresh and new and everything has its place. But then, little by little, the clutter starts. First, it's a sign to promote the latest special and then it's the loyalty program. Then it's the extra cookie jars and then it's the sign for your uncle's brother's yoga studio. Now when someone walks in, the fresh, spacious vibe has now become a little more claustrophobic and a little less inviting. Of course, the owner probably doesn't see it anymore. When you work in a space every day, it's easy to become blind to details like this. So try cleaning out the extra stuff and make a rule. If you add something new, like a new product or a new sign, then something else has to go. Oh, and please stop sticking paper signs everywhere. Now, if you're designing a new cafe or planning a full renovation of an existing cafe, then it's natural to collect a whole lot of inspiration from places you visited or researched online. You've got your Pinterest board or a scrapbook or you, you know whatever people do. And it's full of the beautiful colors and finishes and novelty neon signs that you love. But before you start throwing it all together, there is one really important question to ask. Who is this for? It's like this, the most successful businesses have a clear idea of who their ideal customer is, and they use that to guide the choices they make in every part of their business. So when you're reviewing all that design inspiration, make sure that it's not just about you. You wanna focus on refining it to something that's the right fit for your target customer and fits with your brand. Now it's not an easy thing to do. To keep the design focused and consistent, you'll probably need to let go of some of the design elements that you love but if you can skip the bloated design buffet and get that design on a tight diet, you'll be shredded in no time. Sorry, I really have no place using a workout metaphor. Let's, let's move on. Now this one is pretty simple. A lot of otherwise great designs are held back with crappy furniture. That is furniture that either doesn't fit the overall design, doesn't make good use of the space, or is just plain cheap. Yes, some places get away with cool, eccentric, upcycled milk crates, school desk, or old barrels they found on Facebook Marketplace, but this might not work for you. Remember my last point, you need to keep in mind your customer and your brand. You know, and the fact that humans need to use these things to eat and you want them to come back. Now, speaking of your customers, think about what combinations are showing up. Is it in groups for breakfast? Is it couples catching up for a quick coffee? Or maybe they're all alone. Getting the mix right can have a big impact. It seems trivial, but when people are planning where to meet for coffee, high on the list is, can I get a table? So having the capacity and the right mix of tables, benches, or other seating can add tens of thousands of dollars in sales over a year. So it's worth doing a few rough mud maps of your space 
trying out different combinations of seating to find something that makes the best use of the space you have. And for most places, I think the best choice is to source commercial furniture or get your builder to include this as part of the quote. Have you ever been to a coffee shop where things just don't flow? The staff are in each other's way or maybe customers are waiting awkwardly for takeaway coffee. It's not a great experience for customers and it increases labour costs because staff are working less efficiently. And a bad, inefficient flow is way too common. So here's a couple of rules to make sure that doesn't happen. First up, the design should guide the customer. Now I think this is something that Starbucks is really good at. In a typical Starbucks, when you walk in the front door, they deliberately leave extra space to guide you towards the register. The menu is right behind the register because that's the info you need at that moment. Then the floor plan leads you to the handoff area at the other end of the bar where they have a waiting area so customers aren't in the way of the next group of customers waiting to order. And they're also not getting into the personal space of customers sitting down. Now, of course, not every coffee business has the same model as Starbucks, but we can adapt this way of thinking to any type of location or business model. Think of it like this, how can I guide customers through the process? Now, in my own cafe, we had a fairly even mix of sit down and takeaway orders, but the space didn't allow us to design the cafe in the same way as a typical Starbucks. Instead, we built a bar opposite the order point with condiments and newspapers. That way customers at least had a spot to lean or to catch up on the news while they waited for a takeaway. And importantly, they didn't take up seating that we needed for sit down customers. Now, a second part of a good flow is how quickly and efficiently your staff can work. I think the best way to think about this is in zones. Let's say you have three staff behind the counter. Now you wanna make sure that during busy periods, each of these three jobs can be done within arm's reach and without crossing over each other's areas. Now that means being smart with the type of equipment you source and making sure you organize things within these three zones in a way that makes the most common tasks as quick as possible. Now it sounds simple, but you'll also need to allow for the fact that sometimes you'll have more than one person on each station and during quiet periods, one person will need to do multiple jobs. Again, it's best to try a few layouts on paper and think through the most common tasks during busy and quiet times. Now at the start, I mentioned those high-end award-winning cafe designs. There is one other thing that all those designs have in common. They're all designed by professionals. Now here's the bit you probably don't wanna hear. The mistake that a lot of smaller independent coffee shops make is DIY design. But my advice is that most cafe owners really should hire a professional designer. I mean, think about who you're competing against. The coolest, most popular coffee place in your area was most likely designed by a pro. All the big brands use professional designers. Now I have met a small number of cafe owners who happen to have a great eye for design, but it's pretty rare. Most of the time when cafe owners take the lead on design, the end result is pretty average and that can have a huge impact on sales. Now this is advice that I'm glad I took when I was planning my own cafe. It's important to get right because customers are drawn to places that feel right. The places they go for coffee is like an extension of who they are or who they want to be. So back at the start of this video, I mentioned that the best cafe designs start with a great location, but getting the right location is important for more than just how it looks. It's a key part of your overall strategy and it can make or break your business. So in this video right here, I'll explain what I mean and give you some examples on what to look for. 